Thank you, Anne Broder, so much for asking to have a look at my Vandas. It's been a while, you're absolutely right. They've just been growing and doing their thing through the summer. Thank you, anybody else that has clicked on this video, of uh, your request video for an update on my Vandas. And I just wanted to show you that we are basically in the Vanda hanging area number one where I have the Denisoniana here on the left and the Tessalata black for lack of a better ID on the right. And I say that because the blooms as such didn't turn out to be anything black-ish. They were tessellated, but that's about it. So I'm just going by what is on the label, not because I know her identity. So these two have actually been doing really, really well. My Denisoniana is growing like a beast, but it will not bloom. And it is growing a keiki that you can see there on the side. I got a keiki coming. Very much appreciated, Denisoniana. How about some blooms? I'd like to know if you are what I bought. The Tessalata Black here on the right is going absolutely nuts on the keiki department. I'm going to take it down and we can have a closer look. It is turning into quite the machine. It's a bit breezy today. I hope I can protect the mic enough so that it doesn't make any kind of nasty sound. But I, from what I can count, I've got four keikis here. So this one's coming out and through. It's managing to go through the network of the root cage, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Here's another one, little one starting, and we turn it around. Oh, mind the roots. Here's another one, and here is another one. So that's four keikis on the bottom of this Vanda, which is pretty impressive. First time bloomer for me this year, and I hope that now that it's coming into beast mode, that we will get more of the same next year. So looking at this pair from the other side, I have them with full sun in the morning coming from the east over there. And you can see that early afternoon now they're back in full sun. So the question for the Denisoniana that likes a lot of light, it's not a lack of light for sure. So something else is going on. Maybe I just have a beautiful Denisoniana that stays green. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna turn around and then we'll look at the other ones. So my leopard yawn here on the right is doing fantastic. It's got some superb root growth going on. Very pleased about that. And it's trying to push another spike, but I think that would be probably something for next year. It's not going to amount to anything at this point in time. And it's still a little nubbin in there. Lepidion is doing well. The two that we butchered and cut in half in the hopes of saving them, the Lavender Mist here on the left and the Denisoniana Chocolate Star here on the right, I am very concerned and I think that this is probably the point of this entire video and the request. It's probably to see after we took them down and have them in order to save them from the stress they've been enduring over the summer. The lavender mist looks like it's trying. You can see that the crown there is doing a little bit better. The leaves are still extremely wrinkled and I'm gonna go and face the other side slowly so that I don't have to battle backlight. Just one moment. Scooting through the roots here. So you can see how wrinkled the leaves are. They're not in the best of shape, which is extremely concerning after a couple of months now. It was August when we did this. Yes, it was the hottest time of year, but I thought I was doing them a favor to do it during the hottest time of year instead of waiting because they were really, really struggling. And I am quite concerned. And the dark chocolate star here on the left, very concerned. I don't know if this is clearly visible or where else could I put them. 
So we just made the Vanda hangers recently. But the dark chocolate star, I am losing leaves. Far too many and far too quickly. Let me just come around the other side here and show you. Losing leaves, like I'm losing my hair. <laughs> but uh, I don't like the state of this orchid at all. Very concerned for her. I don't like the fact the leaves are yellowing on the inside. You can see the trend is going all the way up. The top here and on the outside, they still have a pretty good appearance. So this is maybe not just stress from over blooming and doing too much in the summer. I didn't see anything wrong with either of them when I cut into the stem. I didn't see anything that would cause me concern. Of course, it's dried up now. We can't really see anything. But nothing had me alert. I'm not getting any root tips on her. I've had significant mechanical damage from the handling. But there's no sign of real recovery. I'm really concerned about this one and I wonder if I'm going to have it around this time next year. I have a very bad feeling here. I mean, she can always prove me wrong. It's trying to grow in the top. But in general, nah, Denisoniana is not looking good. The dark chocolate star one, now you can really appreciate the wrinkles there. Not looking good at all. And I soaked them in the Vanda bucket for about two hours now this time of year. We're at the end of October 2020. Two hours they get a soak. And it's just, it's just not, it's not happening. At least the lavender twist has got some root tips growing. And I can see the roots absorb it. Same with the Denisoniana black. The roots are absorbing. But the orchid itself, nah, I don't think she wants to. She's not looking good. Not at all. So let's keep our fingers crossed there. And then I want to show you one more that we probably have never really seen close up. This is Myrinco stylus gigantea, crossed with Vanda cerula. And yes, can you believe it? She is permanently in a bucket. And the roots that grow out, they don't amount to much after they start to grow. They try to regrow. Anything with Rinko stylus in it. And I just, I just don't know. I, I, I can't do it here with this dry climate. And I had her out in the pouring rain. I mean, look at this orchid. She came to me in bloom, and that's all I've ever seen of the blooms when she arrived. And you can see that in the past I used to tape where the roots were coming out into, in order to avoid burn. So this hanger is pretty rusty by now. Maybe I should change it. But this orchid is in water 24-7, and I missed the roots once a day in the morning. I spray her down. This is fertilized water at 300 ppm. Sometimes she gets a complete drenching with seaweed and RO water. There's nothing that's telling me that she's going to be okay. She's ticking over, but not in any way, shape or form thriving. I had a massive scale problem with her as well this past summer. We've gotten over that. It was that fuzzy scale, horrible stuff. I got over that and I took that off the bottom leaves where it was the worst. I wasn't going to mess around. I just stripped the leaves off. And it always looks like she's going to do something and be productive. This stem has started to grow since she's in water 24 seven, the entire season she's been in water. The only time I took her out of this bucket was when it rained so hard the last couple of days. That's when I took her out so that she could be in the rain. And I'm seeing that this structure here is a little bit more 
elongated than before but I'm not I haven't seen any blooms I haven't seen any sign of vigor that tells me that this is going to be a thriving orchid one day and then back here I have the bottom part of the lavender mist that I had cut off somewhat cleaned up back in the day and I had I've kept it because of the two keikis growing here. Let me get this. There's two keikis, otherwise I would have already gotten rid of it. But then I saw these two and I thought, you know what? It's not hurting me, it's not in the way. I soak it an hour and a half or two hours every day in the Vanda tub. But I don't see this these keikis producing any roots. And these other roots, although they're viable, I've cut into a few of them. They're very, very tired. And there's just no vigor at all. But it's not in my way, per se. Come winter, I might be of a different opinion, but for now it's just, yeah, I don't know. I'll just keep going, you see? I've got roots that just don't continue growing. And there, I've got them, all these root tips, I've got them everywhere. They just sort of said, okay, fine, you've chopped me off. I'm done. Just like that. Whoopsie, I almost forgot one. And I had already completed the video. So this might be a different kind of a sound. So apologies for that. But I did want to add this clip in because here's another Vanda we haven't seen for a long time since my attempt at water culture, defining which ones are in water culture. So supposedly this is Vanda Green Hopper. Please don't ask. This is from Olympus of eBay, who has magical, fantastical names. And well, always had an issue with spots. I was trying to put it in the blistering hot sun in order to burn the spots out. To some degree it has worked, to some degree it hasn't. This leaf in the middle here is going super slow. We have a spike. Incredible, incredible. And this Vanda I have got in this tupper with fertilized water also 24-7. And the way the roots are growing at this point, as you can see, in comparison with my Rhynchostylus gigantea crossed with the Vanda cerula, there is a Rhynchostylus in this whatever cross it is green hopper we'll see what comes out if that spike makes it but it's not a pretty looking orchid and you can see the roots down here are not interested in extending at all i have taken off rotting velamen and left the inner root on i've got root nubbins trying and at the end of the day they don't extend i've had some success with attempted root growth along the stem but again it's like well why did you stop it's on so close to water and still it doesn't want to grow and i have people behind the hedge with their idling car and not on my mic so i'm going to cut it short here but you can see this vanda is hit and miss sometimes we get a hit and then it starts to miss again so that's my little Vanda update, Anne, and anybody else that has clicked on this video. Thank you so much. I appreciate your request. I hope I did your request justice and showed you what you wanted to see. And if not, then feel free to ask and I shall elaborate further in the comments below. But I have, you know, I've got like one, two, three, let's say the two, Lavender Mist and the Denisoniana Black and the Rhynchostylus. Three out of six, 50% are dodgy. I'm not confident. The other ones, they're doing wonderfully, as they should be. So let's see what these two candidates do. And let's see what Rhynchostylus Gigantea crossed with Cerulea down there does as well. Either way, I'll keep trying as long as I see green. <laughs>
Let's go back up here and just sign off with a beautiful view. I call it the Battle of the Lips. Chunya, good life number one on the left. And Dinard, blue heaven here on the right. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for your request. I hope that you are well and everything is okay in your part of the world. Let me know if there's anything I've missed. Take care. Stay safe. Bye.